Greetings in the wonderful name of my Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ. I trust that you've had a blessed week this week, um, and I trust that you're looking forward to a truly blessed year to come. 2024 promises to be um, a truly phenomenal year and a truly blessed year. Um, and that's what I'm believing God for, and I trust that you are doing the same as well. Amen. The title of my message this morning is Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. So, regardless of which path we each walk down, we know that God is always with us and inevitably always at least one step ahead of us as well. So no matter what mountains you come up against, just know this, he's already climbed them. No matter what journey of uncertainty you may encounter as you go through this year, as you go through life, just keep in mind, God is faithfully walking ahead of you. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Sometimes it can be easy to make the mistake of thinking that we are walking through this world alone, especially when life happens. And of course, when I say that, you know exactly what I mean. So unexpected things will happen. Life often happens. Um, or when you look around at your current reality and it doesn't match up quite perfectly with what God has spoken over your life. Um, please, I urge you this morning, uh, do not allow temporary real realities to sway you from the knowledge that God is with you, that he is Emmanuel, he is God with us. He is leading and guiding you. He's ordering your footsteps. He's preparing the way for you. And he's going ahead of you to make every crooked path straight. I encourage you to be attentive and to listen for his voice, to listen for his leading and his guiding, and to consult him in everything before you make your next move. All praise be to God. Amen. So he is God with us. We see in Matthew chapter 1, and I'll read from verse 18 to verse 24, we see that Joseph is wrestling with this idea of what to do about Mary who is suddenly pregnant. But reading from the Amplified Bible from verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother, Mary, had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her promised husband, being a just and righteous man, and not wanting to expose her publicly to shame, planned to send her away and divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, descendant of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. The Lord is salvation. For he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22. All this happened in order to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet Isaiah. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and give birth to a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which when translated means God with us. Then Joseph awoke from his sleep and did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary to his home as his wife. In this passage of scripture, we see how Joseph receives a message from the Lord about his firstborn child. He is told that his son will save his people from their sins. And Joseph is told that the very meaning of Jesus' name will be, the Lord is salvation, God with us. And this brings me to my first point for today, which is, the Lord goes before you and will be with you. The Lord goes before you and he will be with you. Deuteronomy 31 in verse 8, reading from the New International Version, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid.
Do not be discouraged. The Lord himself goes before you. I like how this passage of scripture makes it clear that it will be the Lord himself. It's not going to be some third party. It won't be some messenger, some stranger, some substitute who is not God, working on God's behalf, which, by the way, would have probably been absolutely fine as well. But the scripture is crystal clear. The Lord himself goes before you and he will be with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. The same passage of scripture, but from the New King James Version, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. When we know that God will never leave us nor forsake us, I have to admit, it makes not worrying a whole lot easier. It makes it easier for me to not be anxious and not be dismayed for me to not be perplexed, for me to not be troubled when I know that God is with me. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. In Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9 from the New King James Version, it reads as follows. Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid nor be dismayed. Why? Why, Lord, why have you given me this command? Why should I be strong and courageous? Why should I not fear? Why should I not be dismayed? For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You see, we do not take it for granted that God is with us wherever we go. Before we embark on a long distance trip, we make sure that we pray and we thank God for his safe traveling mercies. I like to pray in, in particular a specific phrase. And my wife knows this phrase very well. I pretty much say, it's pretty much my standard phrase to say anytime we get in the car, especially when we're going on, a, on quite a long trip. I like to pray, Lord, help us to avoid all accidents and all incidents on the road as we travel from point A to point B. Lord, be with us, protect us, cover the vehicle and help us to avoid all accidents and incidents on the road as we travel from point A to point B. We don't take it for granted that the Lord God is with us wherever we go. And you see, when I pray that prayer, I'm not concerned that, hey, wait a minute, if I pray that prayer while I was in Gauteng, by the time I reach Otswaran, would it still have the same effect? Would it still be powerful? Would it still have the same reach? By the time I reach George or Neisner or Plettenberg Bay or Gordons Bay, is it possible that I might have moved too far out of the sphere of influence of God for him to be able to still protect me, still protect my family, still protect the vehicle? I don't have that concern. Amen. The one thing that I can promise you, and I know this from experience, is when you drive from Gauteng to Cape Town, you are pretty much 100% guaranteed to lose signal. You will lose signal. You will lose reception. The network will fail you. You'll be listening to Spotify as we often do in our family and in our vehicle. We often, pray, uh, we often play Fred Hammond uh, or Maverick City Music or CC Winans. And as we approach a mountainous area, all of a sudden the music stops. And we look at each other in the car and we all say the same thing. No network. Well, I've got great news for you today. According to Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. He doesn't suddenly lose power. He doesn't lose reception. His signal strength doesn't fade. Hallelujah. As you approach the mountainous areas of life, not only does his strength not wither and die, but he rises up as Jehovah al Gibor, and he flattens those mountains and makes your crooked path straight. Hallelujah. When you look on your spiritual GPS, you see one solid blue line, straight as an arrow, with full and uninterrupted signal strength. I guarantee you that if there is a problem with the connection, it's not on God's end. You may have to check your own local landline for connectivity issues. Hallelujah. Point number two, the Lord goes before you 
and follows you so that he can be your rear guard. The Lord, our God, he goes before you and at the same time, he's got the ability to also follow you so that he can also be your rear guard, your protection. He can also always also have your back. We see this in the book of Psalms 139 and verse 5. You go before me and follow me. That's pretty awesome. It sounds like a contradiction, but it's not. Because we know the God that we serve, we know that he's able to go before us and at the same time also follow us. Hallelujah. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Isaiah 52 and verse 12 from the New King James Version. For you shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord will go before you. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Exodus 14 verse 19. Then the angel of God who had been traveling in front of Israel's army withdrew and went behind them. The pillar of cloud also moved from in front and stood behind them, coming between the armies of Egypt and the children of Israel. Aren't you grateful this morning that you serve an all-powerful, omnipresent God who can not only be here with you and I here in South Africa and at the very same time be with another brother or sister in Christ halfway across the world in Malaysia, not only can he do that, but even when he is here with you and I here in South Africa, he can be ahead of us, preparing the way for us, while at the same time, he's literally got our backs. He is our rear guard. It brings a whole new dimension, a whole new meaning to the expression, I've got your back. Now, I know that it's difficult for some of us to make the transition from uh, baby Jesus in a manger, meek and mild, to Jehovah al Gibor, the mighty God, the mighty warrior, the one who fights for us, the one who fights on our behalf. But you have to understand that God does fight for you. He does fight on your behalf in order to give you the victory. Hallelujah. The battle is the Lord's and the victory is yours. I'm sure you've already guessed what point number three is, so let's go right there straight away. Point number three, the Lord goes before you and fights for you. Hallelujah. We're speaking about Emmanuel, God with us. The Lord who goes before you and he fights in your corner. He fights for you. In Deuteronomy 1 and verse 30, the first portion of verse 30, in the NIV it states, the Lord your God who, who is going before you will fight for you. The Lord your God who is going before you will fight for you. Exodus 14 and verse 14 from the New King James. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The same passage of scripture but from the NIV. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. I love knowing that at the same time, again it seems like such a contradiction, at the same time that the Lord is fighting on my behalf, I can have a peace that surpasses all human understanding. There God is on my behalf, fighting the fight for me in order to give me the victory. And I need only be still and be at peace. Deuteronomy 20 and verse 4 from the NIV. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory. Such an amazing, such a beautiful passage of scripture. De Deuteronomy 20 and verse 4. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you. So first of all, he goes with you. He's with me. Okay, now Lord, now that you're with me, what are you about to do? I'm about to fight for you. Wow. So here you are, you with me, which is such a privilege, such an honor to have the Lord of hosts be with me. But he's not just with me just to hang out, just to chill. He is here with me to fight for me against my enemies. Why? 
to give not himself the victory, but to give me the victory. Truly an amazing passage of scripture. Hallelujah. Psalm 3 and verse 7 from the NIV. Arise, Lord. Deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. This is undoubtedly one of my favorite scriptures in 2024. In fact, it's my heart's cry. It's my prayer to the Lord that he would strike every principality, every dark power, every ruler of darkness, every spiritual host of wickedness in high places, and that he would strike them in the jaw. Hallelujah. That every plan of the enemy against me and my family would come to naught, would come to zero in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless his wonderful name. On to point number four this morning. The Lord, God, the Lord goes before you and makes preparations for your arrival before you even get there. I like that. Hallelujah. I like the thought that I'm on my way. I'm from point A to point B. I'm in transit and I know that I know that I know that the Lord God, while I'm still in transit, while I'm still on my way, is busy making preparations for my arrival so that I'm well received when I get there. Hallelujah. Isaiah 45 and verse 2, I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. In the New International Version, it says, I will go before you and I will level the mountains. Hallelujah, Jesus. I have no idea what 2024 holds for you. I don't. I do, however, know that God does know. And because he does know what 2024 holds for you, he is already busy currently right now making preparations on your behalf. The King of Kings, the creator of heaven and earth, is going ahead of you, stepping into your 2024, making preparations that should give you a very high level of comfort and confidence. You may not know what tomorrow holds, but you do know who holds your tomorrow. Who has walked out the journey with you already? You know the one who has every single thing that you need. So why worry? Why fret when the King of Kings is going before you to make all of the preparations for your success? In Isaiah 42 and verse 16 from the English Standard Version, the Lord promises the following. And I will lead the blind in a way that they do not know. In parts that they have not known, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light. The rough places into level ground. There's that theme again. Turning mountains, turning rough places into level ground. These are the things I do and I do not forsake them. Hallelujah, Jesus. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things that I do and I do not forsake them. The world out there has no shortage of so-called rough places, pressures and trials of every kind. But let not your heart be troubled. The Lord your God is with you and he's taking the lead. Hallelujah. Now, I'm secure in, in, in confessing to you this morning that I am not much of a, of a dancer. Um, I can dance by myself, but uh, just in a, in a sort of a small space uh, without too much movement, you know. So my dancing is kind of just a, sort of a side to side in a safe zone. So I don't profess to be any kind of a good dancer. I'm not. Because in order to be a good dancer, you have to firstly have dancing skills. Okay, so that's where it starts. So hands up on my side, I don't have the skills. Hallelujah. And I'm okay with that. I've got many other talents that God has blessed me with. Dancing is unfortunately not one of those. So first of all, you've got to have dancing skills and ability. But secondly, you also have to understand who is leading and who is following. When a couple dance together, there's always one who takes the lead and the other one who follows. If both try to take the lead, 
then the dance will be an absolute disaster. God is always taking the lead one step ahead, even when life makes us feel that we've been left behind. Just keep reminding yourself, God is in the lead. He has gone ahead of me. God is in the lead. He has gone ahead of me. He is orchestrating things behind the scenes. Things I cannot see. Things I'm not even aware of. He's preparing good things for me. Hallelujah. Things that will prosper me and will not harm me. Things that will give me a hope and a future. This is who is in the lead. And I'm so thankful that God is in the lead and not me. You see, there's a way that seems right to my flesh, but in the end, it will lead me to death and destruction. So I would rather submit my will and my way to his will and to his way. When he says move, I move. When Jesus says jump, my response is, Lord, how high? He is the one in the lead. My obedience to his word aligns my life with his preparations. God is preparing the way for me in 2024. Point number five, the Lord surrounds us. How many of you know and will agree with me that there is a distinct difference between God declaring that he is with you and any other brother or sister in Christ saying that they are with you? First of all, he is the creator of the universe and everything in it. So there he has a slight advantage over your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Now, if you come to me and you tell me, look, Brother Stuart, I need a little bit of support. Um, I need a little bit of muscle, someone to come back me up. Uh, then that's fine. Not a problem. Um, but you just need to understand a few things. I can come along with you and I will be with you. But just so that you know and just so that you and I are clear, if things start to get a bit sketchy, you must just know that I will have some obvious limitations. I won't actually be able to protect you from every single angle of attack. It's simply not possible. I'll probably tell you like most people would, hey man, don't worry, I've got your back. I've got your back. But truth be told, if I'm walking next to you or in front of you, then I cannot fend off an attack if someone does come up from behind you. Because, spoiler alert, I am not omnipresent. As I said before, I have many talents and many abilities, but omnipresence is unfortunately not one of them. With God, however, it's a totally different situation. I'm going to show you from scripture how God goes before you while simultaneously having your back and while at the very same moment surrounding you and protecting you on every single side. Psalm 3 verse 3 to verse 4 from the Message Bible. But you, God, shield me on all sides. You ground my feet. You lift my head high. With all my might, I shout up to God. His answers thunder from the holy mountain. Psalm 3 verse 6 and verse 7 from the NIV, I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Why will I not fear? Because God, you shield me on all sides. Hallelujah. Psalm 3 verse 6 to verse 7, I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise Lord, deliver me my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. You can see, once again, that's one of my favorite scriptures. Psalm 34 and verse 7. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. God deals with our enemies on all sides, defeating them for us. God deals with your enemies on every single side, defeating them for you. Psalm 125 and verse 2. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people both now and forevermore. So it's an eternal promise. God has got your back, your front, your side. He absolutely surrounds you and protects you from the attack of the enemy now and forevermore. 
as the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people. Hallelujah. What then is the end result? Point number six. We have complete protection knowing that God is with us. Psalm 91 verse 3 to verse 4 from the Amplified Bible. For he will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. And under his wing you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. He will cover you and completely protect you. John chapter 10, verse 27 to verse 30 from the Amplified Bible. The sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. Verse 28. And I give them eternal life and they will never ever by any means perish. And no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. Verse 29. My father who has given them to me is greater and mightier than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one in essence and nature. No power in all creation is able to separate us from the security of God. He purposed to redeem us and has done so in Christ Jesus. Now the one who redeemed us will also keep us from falling. No matter where the problem is, in front of us, behind us, on our right-hand side or on our left-hand side, no one can take eternal life away from you. Point number seven. What then is our response? As the redeemed, our obligation, our response is to follow Jesus. If the Lord is going before us, our obligation is to follow him. We are, if we are the redeemed, which we are, then we will be led and governed by God. We do not determine our life's discretion, God does, or our life's direction, but God does. We have not received Jesus Christ as Lord only to drag him in the direction that we want him to go. This should never happen. Jesus says, deny yourselves, Take up the cross and follow me. Because he leads us, the redeemed have the responsibility to follow him. There is no room for negotiation. In John chapter 8 and verse 12, it reads as follows. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Whoever follows me, will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Numbers 9 verse 15 to verse 23 demonstrates how the people of God must completely obey the leading of their Lord. Beginning with verse 15, we read, On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony, was set up, the cloud covered it. The cloud is the symbol of the presence of God. Today, it represents the Holy Spirit in us. The passage continues from every, from evening till morning, the cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night, it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. Following the leading of the Spirit means strict, complete, and absolute obedience to God. Verse 18 continues, At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at His command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days, and at the Lord's command they would encamp, and then at His command again they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they would set out. 
These people did not say, wait a minute, I'm still sleeping, I've still got to do this and that, can you just give me a moment? No. When the cloud lifted, they moved. They recognized the absolute sovereignty of God. Therefore, they rendered absolute submission and obedience to his commands. The passage concludes, whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whenever the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. My prayer for you today is that when God says move, you move. When God says stay, you stay. When he says ready yourself, then you ready yourself. Remember that he is in the lead. Therefore, our responsibility is to simply and uncompromisingly follow him. God bless you.